Hello, treasure seekers. It's your killer queen. I wanted to come to you today and have a little talk about Amber. Seems like everyone of late is selling Amber, but nobody really talks about it. What can I tell you about Amber? It can be found from Alaska to Madagascar. Some of the largest deposits are in Myanmar. The, the world's largest deposits, of course, or the largest, largest piece was in Myanmar. The world's largest deposits are in the Baltic region in Russia. 90% of today's amber is harvested in the Baltic region and made into jewelry. And 95% of that amber has been heat treat heat treated or refined to make the amber suitable for consumer goods, uh, beauty supplies in parts of Latvia, food. It goes in a powdered form in face creams, um, uh, teething necklaces for babies. Amber has properties to say to, that are said to be healing there's um, something in amber called succinic acid. This is, of course, butterscotch and egg yolk, which is actually one of the more rare colors of amber. There are nearly 300 colors of amber known to man. And... Most amber is 30 to 90 million years old. It's, of course, a tree resin. And it was a response of the tree when the tree was injured to force the resin out. And just like a diamond, it's actually formed in coal bogs, in a brown coal, actually. And the result is this fabulous gem. And amber is not a gemstone, it's a gem, like a pearl. I have quite a few pieces that I hope to offer this Friday on YouTube in a live video. Midnight, my time, the witching hour here in England. 7 p.m. Eastern in the United States and 4 p.m. Pacific. Five, what would that be? Five mountain time in the middle of the country. Or depending upon, I know Arizona has its own rules and, well, I don't even know what time it is there. But the notification will come up and I hope that you can come and join myself and Possibly Sunday baubles will be calling for myself. These are just some of the pieces that I hope to offer. This ring is amazing. Did you know the inclusions in amber actually make it more valuable? And of course, the most valuable thing to find in amber would be a bug or, you know, the, the dark inclusions and bits and things are bits of flora and fauna, and they actually affect what color the amber is. Uh, when you find actual natural green or blue amber, it's because it's been exposed to the flora and fauna of that region that's allowed it to become that color. What other do you, pieces do I have here? Of course, I have some earrings. And these are spectacular. Because they do, they are quite included. They do have a lot of bits and bobs in them. Get a little close up so you can see. So, the purpose of this was actually to teach you about the care of amber. 
amber is soft. It's either 2 point or 2.5 on the mole scale, the diamond being 10. So it is easily scratched. I mean, with something sharp. You don't want to obviously scratch it with something sharp, but it can be scratched. And one of the easier ways to tell if you're amber, you don't want to scratch it, but if you do scratch it, the scratch will be powdery. If it flakes, it's not amber. Another test is the saltwater test. Uh, I live near the sea, so that's pretty easy. You know, I can just get a container of seawater. And if the amber floats, then it's real. I think it's something like seven or eight tablespoons of salt in a cup of water. But you might want to look that up. I'm not positive what the salt ratio is. But the ember will float. Now, of course, if it's on something, a piece like this, it's on a wire. That's not going to float. How is it? But if it's, you know fabulous beads that just have some I think that's a silk cord that's a silk cord running through there these are vintage as well those will float even this ginormous bracelet yes I mean it's close to the camera but yes it is that big I think the tallest piece is like three and a half inches and I'm not much for stretch, but when it's vintage amber on vintage stretch cord, then yeah, please, I'll have some of that. Um, I'll also be offering some other pieces, some carved amber. Very unusual settings. Not typical of what you find. I mean, there are some typical pieces, but then there are pieces like this that is Etruscan and late 1800s. Mm, pretty sure you're not going to find too many of these. But the care of amber. Um, as women and even men, we have body oils and makeup and perfume and colognes and deodorants and hairspray and so many different products that can get onto this amber. None of them are which are good for the amber. The easiest way to clean the amber, I use a foaming facial cleanser. Anything that I use on my face, I'll use it on the amber. You don't want to use maybe a baby soap you know, a liquid baby soap or very mild shampoo. You don't want to use a, a caustic dish detergent or, you know, I clean a lot of jewelry with dishwasher tabs. Amber would not be, you know, I'm not going to clean a pearl or amber or, you know, obviously something that's soft or glued or that can fall apart with the dishwasher tab. So I tend to use facial foaming cleanser to clean the amber and it's as simple as running it under a, a lukewarm tap applying a bit of foaming facial cleanser say that three times fast to your hands you know swirling the piece around in your hands rinsing it off and then drying it thoroughly but you don't want to leave it at there Amber is soft and it's porous and it actually needs a bit of oil. So I use a facial oil and you easily just put a couple drops into your hands. And just warm it through. And pick up a piece. You want to get make sure you get in between the beads because that's where it gets dry. I 
and it restores the luster to your amber. And this is an oil that you use on your face. So it's going to disappear pretty quickly into the amber, and if not into the amber, into your skin. So it'll actually give your skin a bit of good. Oh, this piece that I showed you a moment ago, the Etruscan piece, you can see just at the end caps there, this has been set on wire. I don't know that I would ever set amber onto wire. And I honestly think that this bit here, since that color's just a little bit different, I believe this was replaced probably in the early 1900s with the invention of Bakelite, because this is Bakelite. This is Bakelite. Uh, this is actually a honey amber, and this is egg yolk butterscotch. I love this piece, it tinkles. Fabulous. All of the pieces are fabulous because I I think so because I picked them obviously, but all of my vintage is hand picked. I don't have I'm if I had lots available to me I'm certain that I would buy in lots. The fact of the matter is here in the UK, I mean, can you find lots? Certainly. Are they going to contain fabulous things that you would want to sell? Well, I haven't found them yet. So each of my pieces are purchased separately. They're all considered pieces. And I consider them something that if it's something that I would wear, then it's obviously something I would sell. I think the rarity, the scarcest amber are, of course, the ones with more color or the ones without color. This little tiny bracelet is absolutely fabulous because it, because it contains a cognac red amber and bits and pieces of egg yolk that actually have white. White, red, and black are some of the rarest of the Baltic. So when you see, <laughs> something like this ring which is butterscotch and egg yolk and it's much smaller than the normal orangey golden ambers this type of amber is more rare so at least here in Europe it's a bit more desired I love the orange orange looks good with my skin I'm not I'm not that keen on yellow on my skin but I mean, would I wear this? Sure, it's fabulous. Of course I would wear it. I think that's about it for Amber, unless you'd want to know something more about it. But we've covered the care of it. You've got to see some of the pieces that I'll bring to you on Friday. I also want to bring some, maybe some bougie handbags. Maybe some Gucci some Burberry. Mm, we'll see. I'm not sure yet. But I'll definitely be there Friday. And I'd love to see you. Have a great evening.